Hi everyone. This is my Trek Checkpoint SL6 uh, 2018 version. It has an Altegra RX805 Di2 derailleur. And right now, uh, this is just my road setup. So I'm running two by with 50, 34 in the front and 11, 28 in the back. The reason I really enjoy this bike is because it's so versatile and I bought it because it's so versatile. So besides road riding, I expect this bike to sort of be my N equals one and I really wanted to use it for gravel as well, possibly bike packing. And um, I also do triathlon. So I got rid of my tri bike and was hoping that I could use this bike for time trials. Um, so I made sure that the geometry uh, could replicate my time trial position and that all checked out. So that's great. Um, but in order to do all these things with this bike, I really need to make sure that I can set up the appropriate gearing for each of those scenarios. So right now the road, it runs 1128, which is the bottom end of the capacity for the RX derailleur. Um, the top end is 1134. And that's good, but I anticipate if I want to go uh, into more rougher gravel or bike pack, uh, bike packing, I would need some uh, lower gears. So possibly an 1142, 1146, maybe even um, an 1150. And if I plan, I'm also thinking about going 650B um, to get more tire volume uh, for the rougher terrain. So that might require me to remove the front derailleur and run this as a one by so then i would definitely want more gear range back there um problem is i've seen people run the rx with uh, up to my about 1140 or 1142 even but if i wanted the 1146 gearing in the back or 1150 i would need to go to a longer cage um and that's important because this the length of this cage will dictate the capacity, the cog capacity, uh, teeth capacity for your bicycle. So the longer the cage, the better the rear derailleur will be at taking up the extra slack. Because imagine if I had a, a large uh, rear sprocket, like a 46 tooth back here, the chain would have to be a lot longer um, in order to wrap around that cassette, uh, sprocket uh, compared to when it's down here at the 11 tooth. So when it's at the 11 tooth, you might have a lot of extra slack and you might see your cage swing all the way back here. But if the cage is too short, it won't do a good enough job at taking up the slack. So making sure that that cage is long enough to handle the disparity between the length of chain required for the larger sprocket, like a 4650 tooth and the smaller sprocket, 11 tooth, um, is what's going to allow you to run uh, that's that a type of cassette that has that much variation in it. So my idea is to swap out. This is a RX with a mid cage uh, length cage. So the Shimano derailleurs come with three different cage sizes. Uh, the Road usually comes with a short cage or SS. Then there's a mid cage, which is a GS, which is this one. And then there's a long cage, which comes on the mountain bike derailleurs, which are SGS cages. Uh, those cages are usually rated for like 1142, 1146, and are found on like the XT and XTR derailleurs. So uh, what I wanna do is I want to try and swap out this GS cage for an SGS cage. Uh, hopefully that will allow me to expand the maximum sprocket uh, that this derailleur can handle to 46 tooth um, or even maybe 50 tooth with the, um, you know, with a wolf tooth road link uh, and some B screw adjustments. Um, so we'll see. Uh, let's get started and see if it works. So here is the RX 805 Di2 rear derailleur. This is still with the GS cage on there. And what I wanted to show you guys is here is the cage um, plate, the inner plate cage plate uh, from, or the outer cage plate, I'm sorry, from the uh, Shimano XT mountain bike rear derailleur. So this should extend um, the capacity 
between the lowest and the highest sprockets in a cassette from 11 to 34 or 34 with this one to 11 by 42 or 46 with this one um, as that derailleur is rated for that tooth capacity. Now, what it does is if you look at the geometry, the pivot point of the RX cage for the top jockey wheel is the same as the position of the jockey wheel. So the jockey wheel is exactly in the center of where this arm pivots. This guy, um, the pivot pivots around this center bolt here, but the jockey wheel is attached upwards and out, out from the center. So you can see here, this is where the mounting point is. This is where the jockey wheel is. So the jockey wheel in the lowest gear will be pushed higher, closer to the cassette when it's in the lowest gear or in the 11th sprocket. And as the cage pivots, okay, the wheel is going to get pushed further back and that will help uh, close the gap between the upper jockey wheel as well and the um, largest sprocket in the back. My concern is, as you see, when I'm just um, trialing this out by hand, once this cage pivots, I don't have much clearance between this cage and that mechanism. So there's a possibility here that this might not work because the cage might run into the mechanism. But the glimmer of hope that I have is if we look at the shifting from the side here or from the top, and as I shift index through the shifts, you'll see that as this cage turns, um, as this cage turns like this, where we would start seeing maybe some interference between the body of the derailleur, the cage will also start shifting out. So my thought is that if the cage can shift out uh, enough, okay, I'm shifting. See, here the cage is shifting out. And by this time here, the cage should be clear of, of the body, as you can see from the top view here. So if I line that up where we are right now, um, this is hard to do because I'm offset a little bit, but there, this is a horrible illustration, I'm sorry. Um, so the jockey wheel should be out, you know, in this area. It might be close, it might be close. Um, and as we continue to shift up the, the cassette range here, <clears throat> this is the max. So when we're in this position, we also have to remember that this is gonna be under a lot more tension when it's on the chain. So this guy is gonna be, you know, hanging out here pivoted down like that, but from the top view, should have some clearance from the body, but we won't know until we try it. So here goes nothing. Uh, I'm gonna remove this cage, put on the XT derailleur cage and see what happens. That's the inner plate. And then I also have the washer for that one. 44 grams for the XT uh, M8000 derailleur SGS long cage. Let me weigh the RX805 again because I forgot to include that little stopper bolt. There we go. Didn't really make a difference. 37 grams. Here's a look at the dimensions of the two cages side by side. So I'm gonna take that washer out, okay. All right, so this is the RX805 uh, derailleur cage. And I'm gonna measure the distance between the pivot and the jockey wheel. And this is also gonna be the same dimension as the top jockey wheel to the lower jockey wheel. So let me zero that guy out, okay. So if we took it for the RX, we have 
center to center. Say close to about 93 millimeters center to center. 93, 94 millimeters there. Okay, for that. Then that's for the RX. This is for the M8000 cage. So center to center. This is just from the pivot points now for the M8000 cage. And it's about 101, 102-ish. Okay. Yeah, about 102 millimeters. Now, if we look at the jockey wheel positions, about 107 center to center. Okay. So here is the M8000 um, SGS long cage uh, inner plate, outer plate mounted to an RX Altegra 805 derailleur in hopes of expanding the cassette range that it could handle. Unfortunately, you could see here when we are in the lowest sprocket or the 11 tooth sprocket in terms of shifts, the jockey wheel actually hits the mechanism. So no go for that. The arm can't move. So that's not gonna be compatible. It was so close though, because if we shift it out about three gears, one, two, three, we get some clearance there, although pretty close. Um, and that will allow the arm to move a little bit, at least up to the stops. Definitely will be safe with the fourth gear here. And you still have this arm, the plate itself actually with too much tension will uh, run into the actual, um, the actual mechanism there. So, Unfortunately, uh, worth a try. It, it would work in the, you know, lower gear settings or uh, the larger uh, sprockets because we're totally clear from this mechanism now. But unfortunately, the smaller sprockets, uh, no go for that. So unfortunately, we're not gonna see an RX um, derailleur with a SGS long cage. I just wanted to check to make sure. Um, I know that's not recommended, but Shimano is pretty conservative in their recommendations. So I wanted to see if I could push the envelope a little bit. Um, and also this sort of rules out, you know, installing those Garbarook um, derailleurs as well to enable like an 1150 cassette.